1986 Cox Plate had the biggest build-up. We knew Bone Crusher so well. He'd won the Tancred and the Derby as a three-year-old at Randwick. He came to Caulfield and won the Underwood Stakes and the Caulfield Stakes, and we wouldn't hear of him being beaten. And yet the New Zealanders had another one called Waverley Star. And during the week or two before, they thought he was just as good. They dominated the betting and dominated the race. This is it, they're racing. Both Gary Stewart and Lance O'Sullivan went early. It was a last man standing. And those two champion chestnuts at the top of the straight at Mooney Valley. Waverley Star's about three quarters to Bone Crusher. They're both under the whip. And then that race up the straight. Bone Crusher's taken the lead from Waverley Star. The Philbert running on the Bone Crusher a neck in front. Unforgettable. I called the race. Waverley Star comes at him. 50 to go. Bone Crusher and Waverley Star, they're going to hit it together. And I thought at the time it was as good as I've ever seen. Bone Crusher and Waverley Star, the Bone Crusher. The greatest race I've ever seen. I was pretty happy with the call, actually. Until later that night, I heard Bill Collins say, and Bone Crusher. And Bone Crusher. Races into equine immortality. Races into equine immortality. And I thought, why didn't I think of that? It was the race of the century. I can still remember it like it was yesterday. Well, Bruce, you were there. Sometimes there's all the hype and then not so much sizzle, but in 1986, the hype was there and what we saw probably was more than any of us could have imagined. As good as it gets, Hayne, but we've had as good as it gets since then because this is a day that it produces as good as it gets, not just once, but over the 100 runnings of the Cox Plate. So it's all in front of us, guys. Strap yourself in, Hayne, Michelle and Micho. And Michelle, you said five or ten minutes ago, before I retire, I want to ride in a Cox Plate. Absolute dream of mine, Hamish. These guys here, it is the biggest buzz. Even just to ride on this day is a buzz, but to be preparing to ride in a Cox Plate, I just am so envious of these guys. It's so exciting and uh, can't wait to see who takes it home. Richo, you've been spending time with the jockeys all throughout the day. You said there's a different feel. Yeah, there certainly is. There's no crowd here, but we know that the feel uh, anticipates and also I start to think about Craig Williams is working so hard to ride at 49 and a half kilos. The Reed family who spent so much time at Ronald McDonald House, their son River, 19 months of age, has stage four lymphoma, a really rare blood cancer, really lethal. Grace, sister, five years old. We wish them a happy afternoon. River, best of things ahead for you. Let's get to Richo who's with James McDonald. He's a Group 1 star jockey. Let's change pace and ask James McDonald to be an analyst for us because six out of the eight Cox Plate horses have run in Australia and James McDonald, you've ridden every one of them. Can we start with one of your favourites in Very Elegant? How do you see her playing today? Yeah, no, she'll go terrific. She's an honest campaigner, tried and true at the top all, all, all year round. Um, she's got conditions to suit now. Small field, no pace will really suit her. So. I, th I think she's the horse to beat at this stage because um, they've all got to come up to her level and she's only going to maintain it. But I'm, I'm sure she had that little blitz there a couple of weeks ago, but I'm sure she'd bounce out of that, especially on this on this track. What about Moanga? Moanga, he's a nice horse. X-Factor horse, um, got a great turn of foot when he's asked. Um, again, he'll be suited by the lack of tempo because he's got a good turn of foot. I would have loved to seen him on real firm ground because um, I think it might just dull his accelerations a little bit, but in saying that, he won't be far away. He'll give himself every chance. Well, you know the two three-year-olds so well. Captive on inside barrier. Animo's probably going to go back. Animo has the best turn of foot. He has to go back. There's no other options for a type of horse like him. Um, he has got no really speed, and if you do, it will really flat him out late in the piece. Uh, Captain Bond, obviously, he'll hold a spot. He'll box seat behind Delisan, I feel. And, um, I think Delisan's the smoky. I really do. I, I, I was I'm wrapped with his performance in the Epsom. I thought it was super. Sustaining a long gallop, carrying a bit more weight than the, the, uh, the first two past the post. Um, but the, you can't get away from the class of Animo at times, but he's going to have to do it the tough way. I better check your passport. It's still got New Zealand, hasn't it? Surely there's some probability mentions. Yeah, probably on firm ground though. The yeah. rain's really dampened her chances. Again, she, she's got a good turn of foot. Whether that affects it, the track's not that bad, but she just wants it concrete. Okay, so in summary, James McDonald, the analyst, yeah. 
says, very elegant? Yeah, I, I, very elegant, a hit of animo. Um, and then uh, good luck to the rest. You are damn good. Caitlin's telling us, yes, he's really, really good at this. Yeah. No, <laughs> I, I hope they all run well, especially the ones that I've had a close connection with. But, um, yeah, she, she's obviously... I think she's going to bounce back here. Mate, you've had a tough start to the day. You've ridden a double, but as always, mate, class. So good luck uh, for the rest of the carnival. Yeah, cheers. Extraordinary sometimes, Bruce, how it works. He's ridden six of the eight in the Cox Plate, but he'll be watching on. Annabelle Neesham, look at this group of brilliant female trainers. And no based female trainer in Australia, Hame, has won the Cox play. Moira Murdoch and Deidre Steen from New Zealand. So it's a rare group. And Annabelle only started training, as we know, 14 months ago. It would be something remarkable. She's lost the favourite, but she's got a live chance with Moonga. Absolutely, she does. So you mentioned Moonga. Let's meet the contenders. It is one of the most iconic trophies in Australian sport. Normally going to do it back to back. To win the Cox Plate, you need to beat the best. Second, he wins his second. And to win it this year requires beating a formidable lineup of homegrown stars and international raiders. Very elegant is Australian racing's reigning queen, current horse of the year, a nine-time Group One winner who has master trainer Chris Waller's touch. And the Great Bear wins a ninth Group One, home best in the George Main. Then there's the three-year-old Colts. In blue, Animo, the rising star who blew them all away in the Caulfield Guineas. Animo the stronger. Animo won the Guineas from Cap de Vaudard. And for Team Snowden, Cap de Vaudard, second behind Animo in the Guineas and a Group 1 winner when he was two. Look out for the Kiwis. Probabil, the daughter of a Cox Plate winner who slayed the giant Zaki at her last start. Probabil just in front, not conformist drives. Photo finish. And call sign Mav. Fresh from a Group 1 double in New Zealand. Oh, he's a great horse, call sign man. From Ireland comes Joseph O'Brien's State of Rest, a winner in his last start in the US. State of Rest to win it here by a length. While the South Aussies will be cheering for Dallasan. Dallasan wins. It truly is a heavyweight championship field to contest the 101st running of the WS Cox Plate. To the 20. Uh, 40 circuit here at the Valley, which is so famous. Take us from Barry to Post. Yeah, here you see, Haim, you don't have a huge run into the first corner. It's it's probably just enough, but it's still a bit of a mad dash to get to that first corner and get your position and not use your horse up too much. Once you hit this corner, which rounds around into the mile, um, it starts to run downhill. Here we see about around the 1,200, it, it levels out and uh, you, you, we've got quickly to the home straight. And here, as I said, earlier in the day. It's a very short home straight, 250 metres, so you want to be within striking range. And here on the back of La Grasso, who won it for Damien Lane, and um, I'm sure whoever's taking the lead at this point is going to be a very exciting jockey. So we're just six minutes away. To Dallas San we go. He's the first horse to assess. He's had 13 Group 1 starts for one second and three thirds, but he has a 3-0 record over Mwanga. I just query whether or not actually the Sydney way of going is the way that he races his absolute best. As as opposed to Melbourne. I know he's run some terrific races in Melbourne, but he flies in Sydney. And Bruce, here's an X Factor, a Kiwi, call sign Mav. He's won three Group 1s, uh, Richo, and he's been in eight of them and been placed in another three. So, look, he's a very good horse. I think he'll probably lead. Uh, we just talked about it with Michelle, either he or Dallison. I don't think he can win. He hasn't been winning by enough margins. And when you look at the Avantage, Melody Bell sort of tie-in, I don't think either of them would win this Cox Plate. So I'm thinking he's one, probably the only horse I wouldn't give a realistic chance to. I'm probably being a bit hard. He's been an honourable horse. And, of course, Stephen Bast has bought into the horse after his first Group 1. I think he paid uh, 85000 with a group of mates to buy into about a 35% share so there's a real connection there with you know the smiling Stephen Bastard so he looks beautiful the horse he's by a son of fast neck rock um, Luke Nolan's been there and done it with Earl Segundo. Mwunga we've heard a lot about him today of course he's a stable mate scratch he's an outstanding race horse he did beat very elegant at group one earlier this campaign he's a group one winner as a three-year-old over this trip his campaign has been I think faultless he's got the right jockey he won four consecutive cox plates think of the pressure that Bowman was under in those cox plates He'll handle this. And Annabelle, we've got to know her even better today. Um, it would be something. He's a lovely horse. I think he's got a fantastic chance. But, Michelle, the number one seed 
is very elegant. She's won nine Group 1s, Michelle, nine different Group 1 races. This could be her tenth. She is, Bruce, and we heard James McDonald speak with Richo, saying that he thinks she's the one to beat. He's obviously ridden her in so many of her Group 1s, and... She looks very relaxed here again, as we saw her last time at Flemington, where she didn't fire, but still not ruling her out on that. Her work here through the week looked really good. Um, I think that the wet track really brings her into play. Where she settles in the run is going to be really interesting. I would love to see her race on speed and take on the race early and make it a test. I think they'd struggle to catch her, but she's going to be hard to run down. Well, the wet track helps her, Bruce, but probably doesn't help Probabil. No, it doesn't, Richo. And look, Brett Preble, of course, he's had a remarkable five Group 1s this spring. He gets the Grand Slam if he can win today. Maybe controversially, I think she's probably a better mare than Melody Bell and Avantage. I don't know what you think, guys think, because she's done her Group 1s here in Australia, uh, but the track probably doesn't suit her the condition. If it was a dry track, I would have given her an absolute chance of winning this race. Richo, this bloke's fascinating. Isn't he just? What about the Irish? So the Irish bought out um, Armoury last year. It was a dead set dry tracker, bumped into a wet track and was defeated by Sir Dragonet. And now the rain arrived for State of Rest. And that's what a lot of people are saying, that he was really looking for a dry track. I've spoken about his Saratoga uh, win in the uh, Invitational Stakes and the form references there. There's form all around your beer. Even you go back to a horse who ran fifth in that race in Secret Protector. He then ran third in the, Roy in the Hampton Court at Royal Ascot and was beaten only two lengths by a horse who then ran fourth in the Judmont International. I mean, it's, it is unique international form. And Michelle, he's got to beat this outstanding three-year-old colt, Animo. How exciting to see him in this race here. He's just been the horse that we've been so excited about and uh, he's taking on a field where I think he's going to measure up. He's obviously drawn the outside of we've spoken about. He might be able to get onto the back of a horse like State of Rest, track him into the race. I think he's going to be really rounding them up late and, uh, yeah, it's going to be exciting to see if he can run them down. Well, readings and inexact science. Uh, here's Captivant. His dad, capitalist, was brilliant, winning a Magic Millions and a Golden Slipper, never ran further than 1,200 metres, and his mum's name was Speedboat. She had five starts, only one placing, um, and that was at Burrumbeat, and her last ever start, she was seventh of ninth at Hanging Rock. So it's not necessarily about the breeding, Haim. The gut says he'll run a solid 2,000 metres. He was superb in the game match. Dean, I wish you were here. The jockeys, they're taking their normal spot in the tower to get a look at this fabulous race. Yeah, and it is every year, Haim. And it's a, a fascinating race this year. In years gone by, we've come to see the greatness of Winx. Today we see a contest, maybe a battle of tactics, maybe the best ride will win. As maybe it'll be very elegant 10th Group 1 individually. Uh, I'm going to go with Animo. I think he's a really terrific athlete. He'll need to be because he might have to make up ground. But uh, everything he's done to date through his career suggests to me that he's got the right attitude to win a, a Cox Plate as a, a three-year-old. And I'm going with him. I'm wary of very elegant because of the conditions, I think, uh, certainly play her way and state of rest. I think if there was going to be a out-of-the-box winner like, and win by a margin, it'd be state of rest because we can't line him up, whereas we've got a pretty good handle on the rest. But I'm going to go with Animo. Thanks, Dino. Brett, the market mover? Yeah, Mwanga's the market mover, Haim. You would have thought... If it was Annabelle Nisham's horse was the market maybe you would have thought Saki, but the punters have come for Mwonga. $16 before the scratchings. It's now into $5. Annabelle trying to win her first major, Bruce. Well, when Annabelle won the Mercer Cooper and he beat Forbes and they pulled up, he looked at Forbes' as jockey and he said, don't worry, you've just been beaten by a champion. That's ringing in my ears and it has all the way through his career. I'm with Animo. So the lung-busting 2,040 metres at the Valley. It's the race for the bravest. Two minutes where stamina and fitness and strategy and heart all collide. The race where legends are made. Let's get to Matt Hill for the 2021 Cox Plate. Australia's best race is about to get underway as Animo for Craig Williams, who's won the race twice, goes in. And the field is set for the Ladbrokes Cox Plates. 
Stand by for a start. And they're racing. Dallasan away fairly. Captive on out well with call sign Mav. Dallasan's going to boot up between them. And then came Probabil after 100 metres. Captive on using that inside draw to lead from call sign Mav. Dallasan a half length away. Two and a half lengths. Boonga who's making sure he stays off the fence. And Probabil as a result Very falls three wide. Since, yeah. State of rest behind them. Three lengths Animo. And very elegant as last of all, 1600 to go. Captive off the leader from Call Sign Mav. Then came Dallasan, who's three off the lead at the moment, 1400 metres to go. Three lengths Moonga, then Probabil, State of Rest, three lengths Animo, two lengths Very Elegant. Heading towards the bottom corner, and it's Captive on is going to try and lead all of the way. The three year old with the lightweight, with 1200 metres to go, led out by two lengths at an even speed from Call Sign Mav. Dallasan is third, a length and a quarter Moonga. Two lengths, Probabil, State of Rest, Animo, second last. Two and a half, very elegant. Through halfway, a thousand metres to run. Captivant getting a good fraction here by a length and a quarter, call sign Mab. Then came Dallasan, Moonga, a length and a half, Probabil. Then State of Rest, no change. Animo, second last. Two lengths, very elegant. To the side of the course now. 800 metres to run, and they're travelling off the rails. It's Captivant leading by a length, call sign Mab. Then Dallasan, Mawunga, Probabil, State of Rest, four off the lead as they're about to pack up. Animos, five off the lead, very elegant getting going. Captive on at the 500 metres, they're in the middle of the track. Indle goes for the whip, here come the runs. Mawunga up around the outside. Dallasan trying to cut the corner, then call sign Mab, running through them. State of Rest has got the split. 300 to go, and the Irish horse sprints clear. State of Rest a length, Animo follows it through, and very elegant to the outside at the 200, State of Rest and Nick Animo, very elegant late it's State of Rest at the 100, Animo wearing it down, State of Rest just in front of Animo, State of Rest holding on, State of Rest I think has just won for the Emperor Isle from Animo and very elegant then came Mawunga, next to finish Probabil, Dallas and Colstein Mab and Captivant in a thrilling Cox plate Well I think it's State of Rest, I think it's the All Island Affair this classic family and it's Joseph O'Brien perhaps or is it Animo that brave run no state of rest gets there he's only 25 or 6 the trainer Bruce he continues to take the world on and beat the world and Johnny Allen well he came out he wasn't really considered a flat rider but he continues to win group ones that was a stoush for the ages what a magnificent contest, and Joseph O'Brien gets that third major here in Australia and goes to a place that no other international trainer has been, and for Johnny Allen, that whole connection. But this is where the race started to take shape. He got this magnificent run through Michelle. This was the moment, and then Craig Williams also made a big move. What a finish up the straight, Michelle. Unbelievable, Bruce. He, he was so cool, Johnny. He had no choice, but he was so cool in behind them. He got that split, and it was interesting to see Animo had followed him through. We were waiting for him to sort of come off the back of um, Very Elegant, but what a stash it was down the straight. We see these great horses fighting it out, and a uh, huge training performance by Jason O'Brien. Hey, this is pretty interesting, and I don't, Michelle, they came to get, no, Animo started to run out, but then State of Rest has run down in. I reckon Craig's going to have a look at this. Now, I'm not saying it'll be upheld or I'm not sure there'll be a protest, but I wouldn't be surprised. Let's have another look at this, Heyman, Michelle, because let's... OK, so State of Rest takes the lead. Animo's two links away, very elegant winds up. State of Rest gets across onto Mwunga. He's running out now. Animo's about to come out onto State of Rest. Now, Michelle, this is the moment about to come up. Here we go, State of Rest Animo there. He comes down, or maybe not. What do you think? Well, if you have a look at the Moen lines, Bruce, he's moved almost three quarters, I think, of a cut across Michelle. If you have a look at this, so State of Rest is on the edge of the two lines. You look at where he ends up. Yeah, he certainly has. He shifted in, taking him off his course. I think Craig Williams will certainly be having a look at it. It's too tight a finish, and it was, uh, yeah, I think he's definitely going to have a look at that. Gee, it's going to be interesting, It's a protest hey? all day long, Bruce. Well, it, it has to be a protest. Um, it's going to be so difficult uh, to get your head around it. Animo looked the win. I don't know about how you two felt. I felt Animo was going to win 100 metres from home. Craig is a good talker. Johnny Allen's going to have to really talk well, Michelle, because Craig can really <laughs> talk, can't he? <laughs> 
He certainly can, and Johnny's going to have to bring out his best English. So I'm sure the stewards are going to understand a thing Johnny Allen says in the stewards room. But what Michelle turned to me during the race, and we looked at each other, and we looked at Animo and thought that he wasn't handling the ground, Bruce. And, and look, I was a bit the same, but Williams rode superbly, and then he wound him up. And this was just the most magnificent contest, and we have another look. So here's Animo, state of rest, and he does come down on him. Animo had some momentum, and this will be so interesting. And Haim and Michelle, I think about Northerly and Sunline and that famous one with Viscount and that big protest that went on and on and on. And we've got ourselves a sensational climax. I don't know if Dino's still with us, so I'd be fascinated, Haim, if he was still online to see what he thinks about all of this. But what a race, what a finale, and still with a lot to play out. And the other amazing part about it, state of rest, ran into Mwunga and almost went sideways mm. and regained and gathered himself again. Uh, let's get to you, Richo. Well, Mark Power, on behalf of Joseph O'Brien, congratulations. The Irish eyes are smiling. Describe what it's like for you to be part of a team that's just won the Cox Plate. Richo, it's unbelievable. And today is nothing but a true reflection in what it took to get this horse here today. From the lads at home in the yard, there's that many to mention, from farriers, vets, lads who look after them at home. Johnny Allen was super on him. You won't get stronger inside the last 200 than Johnny there. And then we've probably got a fair man pre-training for us and Joseph O'Brien as well. <laughs> uh, it's outstanding. And it's just a credit to the whole team at home. And MJ Dorn who rides in there, it's, it's amazing. His win in Saratoga was fantastic. And by all, all reports, he really settled in well here? He did. He, he, from the moment he got off the... From the moment he got off the plane um, and touched down in Werribee, his work had been really good. MJ rides him every day at home. He can be a little bit of a handful sometimes, so MJ is, is the right man for him. And he was always delighted with him. We were reporting to Joseph that we were happy with him, uh, and he's proved it here today. OK, now there is a protest second against first, so uh, you'll have an opportunity to go in and represent Joseph in, in that hearing. We would love to reflect on this brilliant win. We'll let you go and get that out of the way, most importantly. Congratulations. Great win. Cheers, Richard. Thank you. I'm sorry to spoil the party for Mark, Bruce, but we've just heard that the protest is on. It has to be on, Haim. I mean, of course it's got to be on. I mean, fractions of centimetres this is all about. And Animo had a lot of momentum up. And, look, it's going to be a massive decision. Where I, I'm thinking it's a 70-30 call. I think State of Rest will probably hold the race, but it is not much in this. I don't know what your gut feeling is, uh, Michelle. Oh, I think it could go the other way, uh, Bruce. I think the, the key factor is that Animo was making up the ground until he actually got bumped, and then it stopped his momentum from picking up the ground he was making before that interference occurred. And the other thing is he crowds his um, width space, which I think Animo's, you know, we're in, we're in the final stages of a race, and uh, he's definitely, you know, shifted in. It's against the rules Stops of racing. Stops the whip riding there. Yeah, yep. and uh, yep. definitely makes contact and puts him off his course, so I'm leaning towards it being upheld, Bruce. And just think of what's at stake here, um, uh, all of us. I mean, the fame of winning a Cox Plate, all the things that go with that in terms of the breeding of horses. Could Godolphin get the Grand Slam? Could Joseph O'Brien go to a place where no other international trainer? For Johnny Allen, what a breakthrough. He's won all those derbies, but this takes him to another level. And for Craig Williams, he moves up, doesn't he? He's already won the four Grand Slams. He moves up again and gets another one here and gets closer to Wally. It's just everything riding on this. Two Colts, both of them really three years of age. And as Richo said earlier today, this is the youngest horse, Animo, who have if he wins, will be the youngest horse ever. He's not even a three-year-old. So it's, oh boy, oh boy, it's a dramatic finish to what was a colossal Cox Plate. Hey, it never disappoints. Well, it never disappoints. You think of 2001, Viscount and Northerly, That's Viscount exactly what I talked about earlier, Sunline yeah. against Northerly. That, that's what well, I talked about that earlier, Hayman. That was Bruce dramatic. Is that we won't... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and we, we've just been told there will not be any coverage of the jockeys and the stewards because of the COVID rulings. We're not allowed into the stewards' room, so we just wait, Bruce. We do, uh, and we wait on our edge. And, look, this is, a, a, this is the toughest decision the stewards will have to make all spring in Victoria. This is what they get paid to do. It's a very hard call. As I said earlier, my feeling is that State of Rest will possibly hold the race. I'm... Um, we were on to the protest early. Um, I'll put my hand up. I'm on Animo, 
Um, but anyway, um, that's not going to have any influence on it. Um, <laughs> Well, I can try and get the stewards here, but I'm with you. I don't think, Katie, you've written, and Michelle's given her view. She thinks that maybe Animo gets the verdict. What are you feeling? I'm with Michelle. Uh, he, he clearly, on this shot, he clearly rolls in and bumps him. And just as, as Michelle said, you can't, he, you can't do that. You're not allowed to shift. You're not allowed to make the interference. And, and Craig Williams is such a good talker. <laughs> I, I, I can see this being upheld. Um, you can see him there. He's sort of he's making his run on State of Rest, and uh, as soon as State of Rest comes in and bumps him and impedes him, he's a three-year-old colt. He's still learning. I just think that uh, if this didn't happen, no doubt in my mind, Animo wins the race. One of the things I think, Katie, for poor Johnny Allen, if he does lose the race, is he's ridden the most brilliant race. Uh, the horse is, you know, rolled around, and if he does happen to lose it on protest, how heartbreaking. You go over the line, you salute, oh. you know, you're so excited, and then, you know, if it does get taken away. That overhead shot oh, that we just saw, exactly. Bruce, there's a significant bump. When, when you saw it just moments ago, there's a bump that you see Craig Williams have to put the whip away, regather the reins, get the momentum going again. When you consider mm. the margin... Mm. It's hard to feel it didn't cost Animo the race. No, look, absolutely. And that was, you know, we, we, we were onto it early, weren't we? We, we, we saw it happen live. No, we thought there would be things. that's done. I'm, I'm just trying oh. to think. Um, I'm just trying to think, Hayme, and I should know all this. I don't think a protest has been upheld in the Cox Plate, second against no. first, ever. Um, now, I should know all this off the top of my head, but well, you, know, you get works. excited on a day like today. When you say you should know, it's probably just a fact and you're trying to sound humble. The, 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 we'll ask Nick Egan if there's ever been no, a protest upheld. And if you're saying there's not, there won't have been. Google, you're faster than Google. You've, you're the quickest search engine in the world. Well, I don't think it's ever been upheld. We had the northerly situation with Sunline, uh, and I don't think uh, we've had a protest ever upheld in, 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 in the Cox Plate. Confirm it for me, Hayne, Katie? would you? I, I've just got a message from, from one of the head stewards here in Sydney uh, a couple of years ago, Greg Rudolph, who's actually, I'm pretty sure he's the head steward in Adelaide now, Bruce, has to be upheld. So I'm thinking, yeah. I'm thinking it's going to be <laughs> upheld. <laughs> You even see the way that Animo is travelling there and it's in a complete straight line. He has not deviated from his course whatsoever. It's all on state of rest. And you could actually tell as well, Katie, when Johnny Allen came off, off board, it, was, it, it didn't feel like the greatest of celebrations winning a major, did it? He no. kind of almost knew that he'd done it. Yeah, I think mm. so. And you do know. You do know when you've shifted. You think of preferment and awesome rock in that Australian Cup, which was up. Yeah. Dean, Bruce's question to you is, when was the last time, if at all, there has been a protest upheld 2v1 in the Cox Plate? Uh, I can't think of one, Haim. Um, not at all. Uh, there was 5v2 in that uh, famous 1992 Cox Plate when Better Loosen Up ran uh, fifth and Let's Alope ran second. And... That's, but that's the last time we can even remember a Cox, uh, Cox Plate protest in, in recent times. What would you be ruling as head steward? Uh, my first thought was, uh, I think it was my, my first thought was I wanted it to be dismissed because I don't want a Cox Plate winner to have an asterisk next to it. But the more I watch it, that move, it's it's one stripe of the grass on the track, which is about two, two and a half horses, and he's moved him onto the next stripe of, of uh, grass. So... It's, you've got to say that Animo's entitled to run on the line he was, and in the end, he didn't get that entitlement. Thanks, Dino. We wait with bated breath. Richo, you're down there with an empty soup can against the wall. What are you hearing? Yeah, that's right. In fact, I'm just out of the front of the stewards' room, and now with the new COVID protocols, normally we would be going into the stewards' room, but then when the COVID lockdown happened um, some 18 months ago, this is one of the rules, even though the, the rules are relaxing slightly, this is one rule that has not changed, that media is not allowed into that room, so we can't take our cameras in there, we can't mic them up, we can't listen. Now, I spoke to Mark Power straight after to the race and explain to him the process of what's going to happen here because he had no idea that he can have opportun opportunity to represent uh, Joseph O'Brien um, and all the connections. So Oh, there's a lot to play out. So we've got the Chatterbox and Craig Williams up against Johnny Allen with their thick Irish accents with Mark Power backing up, representing Joseph O'Brien. A lot to play out. Bruce? 
won't be the only argument that Godolphin and Coolmore have had over the years, Hayne, will it? I mean, in terms of... And that's basically <laughs> where State of Rest comes... I mean, th these are the two biggest rivals in world racing. We're talking about the two He's biggest the rivals in world racing. So... It is just incredible that it comes down to this. One of the majors in Australian racing. We're not allowed into the stewards' room. But, Bruce, just on Craig Williams and his ability to talk versus John Allen, how much influence do you think a jockey's view and the way they're able to conduct themselves weighs on the stewards' minds? Do they see rather than listen? Well, I think Craig is so convincing, he's so intelligent when he gets in there. It probably has a little bit of a, an effect. It shouldn't, though. I mean, the stewards, what the stewards should be doing is using their own experience and eyes, and that's what they'll do. So Craig will talk an incredibly good story, and he'll bring all the facts to the table. The stewards would know most of those facts, if not all of them. And Johnny will handle himself pretty well. We know that. But, look, it's a little bit of a... You know, we're having a bit of fun with Craig because he is the best spruker in the game, and we all love him. But he could talk his way into anywhere we know. Can he talk his way to a cox plate here, we're about to find out. But this is where the race started to take shape. So, Captain Vont Lees, I wondered, where was the pressure going to come from? Now Mwunga su supplies the pressure. And this is what Michelle talked about. Have a look at the courage, Michelle, of Johnny Allen and then Craig. Talk us through that. I think the, the beauty of Johnny Allen was he stayed so cool and calm. He didn't try to bustle and push out and force a run. He just waited and waited and he let it unfold. And then when the run came, the horse was there to take it and Animo was just right ready to pounce on his back. And unfortunately for Johnny, because Johnny had ridden the most beautiful race until then, but also so had Craig. And, and with 49 and a half kilos on his back, he was uh, able to sprint strongly and behind him. Well, let's get to Darren Beebman, who's with Jared Middleton, one of the best jockeys we've ever seen and a part of Team Godolphin. Yes, Hamish, just spoke to Darren Beeman. Didn't want to speak until the protest had taken its course, but he did say to me, looking at uh, just how State of Rest shifted in, forcing Enemo to what he says is inferior ground, where exactly where Craig Williams wanted to stay away from. So being a former jockey, of course, he believes there's ground for protest, considering uh, the margin being that short half head and the fact he shifted him off that line into that inferior ground. So could it be what, 25 years since Darren Beeman Rode the horse of heaven saintly to victory, getting a cox plate for Godolphin on protest. Great insight, Jared, from Darren Beedman. So not only has he stopped him being able to ride Michelle, but also positioned him in inferior ground. Yes, that's right. And these are the things that Bruce was talking about that um, Craig will be saying to the stewards that they they should see what their what um, the vision they have there, but these the, these little minor points that Craig will be making sure that the stewards are well aware of that make all the difference in a head bobbing finish that we saw. As Bruce said, halfway down the straight, we thought Animo was going to get him until this interference occurred, and I think that's what the stewards are really going to be taking into account. The invitation's not far away, but we're not heading to Randwick until we get a decision here. Bruce, the more you watch the vision, yeah. do you feel like 70-30 has swung at all? Absolutely. I'm, I'm so close to Michelle and Katie now, it's embarrassing. I, I do think it will be upheld the more I've looked at it. <laughs> the first time I looked at it, you thought, gee, there has to be a protest. And then you think, came. To be upheld in a cox plate, it's got to be a really, really big, big thing because it's never happened before and, and it's such a important race. Richo, uh, go back to you if you found out something. Okay, so the jockeys have just given evidence and they made their way out of the...